Hello Internet, and welcome to the Old Tomato Gaming Channel, where um, I think it's pretty clear what this video is about. Um, Resident Evil 2 Remake was finally officially revealed and given a release date. Um, that's a big deal. Um, because they originally said they were going to be in touch and really communicate with uh, the fans during the development process. And uh, they have been absolutely dead silent since then. <laughs> Which is um, not the way... Not, not usually spelled out very well for how things are going. Usually means that there's a problem. Um, however, everybody's um, ish, everyone's thoughts of uh, disappointment were pretty much washed aside when we were given a uh, cinematic reveal trailer, um, a release date, and gameplay footage, as well as a playable demo at E3. Um, so the game is releasing on January 25th, 2019. Uh, that's fantastic. That's way sooner than I would have expected, um, right after a launch, uh, reveal, but it's very similar to the way they were doing a lot of stuff with, um, Resident Evil 7. Uh, they pretty much, they did a little teaser thing, and then when they did the big reveal of everything, they gave us a date, and the date was also in January. Um, so they did, they're doing really well with this, I'm really happy with how they're presenting things. Um, let's talk about the plot. Um, from the very beginning... The cinematic seems to um, infer that Leon's first encounter with the zombie is actually with a living police officer being murdered in front of him by the zombie uh, inside of a small convenience store. This is a radical departure from how Leon first encounters the, uh, the zombies and how he first enters Raccoon City. In fact, it's very clear that um, they're taking a very different approach because that's also making it appear as though it's going to be very different on how he meets Claire. Um, so that's interesting. Um, small convenience store um, that we've never seen before. It makes me kind of feel like there might be a somewhat open and explore, an openly and explorable uh, Raccoon City to an extent, which would be really cool. I'd really like to be able to look around Raccoon City a little bit more in depth. Um, I think a lot of fans would like to be able to see that. Um, so I'm hopeful for that, but I'm not going to get my hopes too high. Um, um, some notes from within the gameplay of the demo. Uh, the playable demo seems to indicate that um, things took a few days to get as bad as they did, um, which is kind of an implication that is made in uh, Resident Evil 3 as well. Um, but in 2, specifically, there are notes dated from about the 25th, um, stating that things were starting to get bad and picking up and bad things are starting to get worse and all that with the infected not knowing what's happening. Um, Resident Evil 2, I believe, takes place September 28th. Um, maybe 27th, so it, it has been a couple of days since that note. Um, Resident Evil 3 takes place, um, or around the same time frame, but ends on the 29th, because Jill's events occur earlier than that. They start earlier and end after. Um, so that's interesting. Um, how Leon meets Marvin is different, um, which is okay. Uh, I'm not terribly upset by that by any means. Um, Leon mentions with Marvin, um that he was supposed to start a week ago, but was told to, quote, stay away. Uh, that begs the question, who told him to stay away? Um, I would theorize that it might have been uh, the corrupt police chief, um, as Brian Irons is uh, the one who pretty much was, he was in Umbrella's pocket, and a lot of things, uh, he started kind of going a little bit cuckoo, um, thinking that everyone was out to get him, people were on to him, stuff like that. It's actually part of why things fall apart the way they do in Raccoon City with the police. Um, that's kind of the story relevance behind that. So I'm curious if he would have been the one to tell Leon, no, don't, uh, we're gonna we're gonna delay it, do not come here, stay away, we're gonna have you start later to keep um, from having a greater potential of being found out before things fully hit the fan. Um, so that that's my theory on that, but it'd be interesting to see how they actually um, argue that and play that out. Um, Leon's redesign, uh, it's classic, but the design is clearly pulled from real equipment this time around. Um, it's very clear that he's wearing a, not, not a flak vest, but like a, almost like a Kevlar vest. It's a police vest. Um, it's a very real thing. You can get things that look very similar to it with relative ease for airsoft and or, um, that you see police using it. It's just a thing. It's very common stuff. So I actually like the way they did that. It, it works really nicely. Um, 
In the original trailers, Leon's gun didn't appear to be the appropriate firearm, but it was. Um, the lighting was very funky, but um, in the gameplay it's very clear it is still the HK VP70. Um, which is very important because that's actually how you get the hand uh, you get handgun parts later which turn it into a three-round burst pistol um, So I'm interested to see how they go about that because um, even in <laughs> Even in 98 the VP 70 is not a common pistol. I wonder if they're gonna have some kind of um, um, Rationale to why they have those parts just flowing around the police station the VP 70 was from 1970 and at that time, I believe in the 90s, they released the VP9, which was basically the replacement for it. So it's going to be interesting to see if they try and uh, come up with the reasons to why those are there, or maybe it was a, a package sent to him by someone. It'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Um, but Leon's redesign, I like. Um, it's a little bit more real. Um, it, it kind of feels a little more appropriate, especially coupled with the fact that he was told to stay away, and I'm guessing he has no... Um, no response after that when he's trying to say why should why is my delay happening for starting um, so then he's like okay well something must be bad um, I need to go and I need to help and that would explain why he's kind of decked out in police in his like basically his riot gear almost um, going in there because he's expecting something to be bad because he's getting no reply um, so that, that's my speculation on that um, let's uh, move on to Claire's redesign um, her facial redesign is odd but I'm not against it. Um, her uh, overall outfit um, is a pretty aggressive redesign, I think. But I'm not opposed to it. Uh, the jacket's very reminiscent of her design from Code Veronica. Uh, kind of gives me vibes from that. Um, which is not a bad thing. Code Veronica's design was pretty good. Um, my only hope and prayer is that the back of that uh, red jacket she's wearing says Made in Heaven on it. As long as it has that, I'll be happy with it. Um, to almost well, I'll be pleased with it enough to not have to th not be throwing a fit about it like a lot of people are. Um, one of my bigger concerns with redesign is actually with Mr. X. Um, if you freeze frame on any of the um, any of the video uh, any of the videos that show him, um, you can see that he um, um, that he has a hat now. Uh, it feels unnecessary, um, especially since they're supposed to be weapons. At this point, the the tyrants, they're mass-produced tyrants at this point. These are the, the ones they're starting to put in the field and for use. Why in the world do they have the hat? The hat doesn't provide any purpose. Um, the jacket does. The jacket is a is a limiter jacket, is what they refer to it as. It actually um basically prevents them from going complete monster. And when they uh, release the limiter jacket, they do go full monster. They, they get bigger, they get more... Um, uh, more resilient to damage stuff like that. It, it has purpose um, Another issue I have is Why is his face all wrinkly like wavy wrinkles? It doesn't make any sense to me. They have a very successful design already with um, With Resident Evil Vendetta or not Vendetta Resident Evil um, Damnation's tyrants um, They look absolutely amazing in that they look terrifying and it really does make you like Feel please don't come near me get away. Don't come after me um which, this gives that vibe too, but there's no need for the, the weird um, ripple effect on his face. Just feels a little out of place. Like an unnecessary change once again. Um, I would almost say it might work if it's the story relevance is like this is their first batch that they've produced for going out. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't see a need to make that change. So it kind of bothers me for that. Um... Uh, the police station is where they show the first gameplay, um, and it it looks really good. Uh, it's clear there are a lot of changes that are done, but it's still that same police station, which is really nice. Um, uh, there's clearly um, more modern elements in this old police station than there were in the original game. In the original game, when you do the locks... Uh, undo the locks at the computer terminal um, it would there were regular doors and they just went click and they were unlocked um, the more modern elements are they have emergency shutters on all these doors um, that makes perfect sense to me that they would have those kind of shutters on a police station um, the story relevance for why it's a um, a very artistic police station is because it was a formerly a um, a museum if I remember right 
And they, instead of, you know, demolishing it and building a whole new structure, they felt it was more cost-effective to just retrofit it. Um, so the retrofits would make sense that they would put, you know, emergency shutters in with this old eclectic design. So it works, makes sense. Um, and that's a element borrowed, actually, from uh, the original build of Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 1.5. Um, originally planned to be in a more modern police station um, with a lot more living officers in it as well. Um, which brings me to the next point. Leon encounters way more living officers in this demo. Um, he witnesses their death in all, almost all of it, but it shows that they're taking influence more so than a lot of us would probably expect from 1.5. Um, more officers alive at the time of him appearing there, and um, slightly more modern elements added. That makes sense, honestly. Um, this is really good influence and it's very appropriate uh, to be putting in in this regard, so I'm really happy with that. It's a nice melding of um, both builds of the original game, coupled with um, the gameplay basically of Resident Evil 4, but refined with added elements of 7 that worked well, so I'm really excited for that. Um, Another really nice addition was um, the way he get Leon gets his knife. He doesn't start out with the knife. That's a that's a nice thing. I like that. Um, and I like the way he gets it by you know basically um, Brian uh, the Marvin, pardon me, giving him the knife. Um, that's very good. The way they handled that. Um, the way he's pushing for Leon to you know say you are your own priority. Do not go out of your way and risk your life at this point shoot these things right away do not hesitate it's a very nice thing there and he gives him a knife you know it's like anything i can give you to help i want you to have it's very cool um and it add and the knife is used as an exploration item um they show him cutting into some of the the high grade tape so he can get it like the power terminal to make sure he can get a door up you know again you know the shutter door thing for modern police station works well for that um the knife's function has been refined. It is now functioning more, um, has multiple purposes beyond just being an environmental item and a normal weapon. Um, it functions like the defensive daggers in Resident Evil 1's remake, um, where you would find those and you can tap a trigger when you're being attacked to um, stab the enemy with the defensive knife and get away. And that allows you to have some recovery time and you can shoot them and kill them. Um, in Resident Evil 1, when you did that, those knives were gone. You, could, you couldn't go back up to the dead enemy and pick it up. But in this, you can. So, you have one freebie, and then you have to deal with all the other enemies, basically. So, you get attacked, let's say you're bitten by one. You use the knife on him to get him off of you, and then you have to take out all the enemies, including that one, and then you can go retrieve your knife. That's awesome. The retrieval of the knife, and having it be used like the defensive daggers, is absolutely genius and perfect, and I love it. I'm really excited to see how much um, how much other um, implementations from older games are done in such a manner. Um, there's hints that they're doing a um, a gunpowder system similar to that of Resident Evil 3's. Um, so basically, you're um, using multiple grades of gunpowder to create multiple weapon, uh, multiple grenade types and ammunition types. Uh, that'll be really cool if they do do that. Uh, which then leads people to believe, you know, oh well, what what else is being borrowed from Resident Evil 3? Um, I'm going to speculate that they're going to borrow some elements of Nemesis, but not by bringing Nemesis in, because Nemesis, his entire mission is to track down and eliminate STARS members. I think they're going to take some of the track down and eliminate elements that he had and apply it to Mr. X, the tyrant that's after the G-Virus. So basically, once he's implemented into the game, he is going to be kind of like Jack from Seven, mixed with a little bit of... Um, Nemesis from 3, and he's chasing you throughout the game in that regard. I think that's how they're going to implement that. I think that's going to work really well, because that makes perfect sense plot-wise, and it's, you know, taking an evolution from 3 and applying it to the modern-day set. Um, so, yeah, um, basically, um, in conclusion to all this, I am incredibly excited for this game. It looks amazing. It is clearly a love letter to the fans, uh, taking the best of the old and the best of the new games that were successful and putting it all into this very, very precisely built puzzle. Um, 
I'm I'm beyond excited for this. I didn't think I mean I tried to I try to contain my hype for stuff like this, but it's really hard because this is like one of my favorite games of all time being remade with such tender love and care that um, I don't think we're gonna be able to get another remake anywhere close to as good as this. I want Seven to be as good as that. Uh, Final Fantasy Seven to be as good as this remake. But I'm not sure until we see more of it. Um, there's so much of this we're being given all at once. It's kind of like a sensory overload, so my hype level might be a bit aggressive. But it, it looks amazing. It looks fantastic. Um, I can't sing enough praises about what I've seen so far. I'm really excited to see what they reveal later. Um, I'm really excited to see what the special edition of this game will be when they reveal that. Um, if you couldn't tell, I am going to buy that immediately um, without hesitation. Um, but yeah, so, um, Resident Evil Remake 2, um, or Resident Evil 2 Remake, what are your guys' thoughts on this? This is fantastic. I'm, I'm very curious to see if anyone's going to reply to this and actually give me their feedback, what they believe might be happening or what they've witnessed or seen differently than me, um, in these videos. Um, there's only a handful of videos right now, but I mean, the detail that people can find and pick up throughout this is just fantastic. I'm really excited to see what happens with the development and with um, fans tracking down easter eggs and little hints throughout all the stuff. Um, so if you guys haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Um, stay up to date on all of our latest videos, whether it be Let's Plays, videos like this, or other such fodder, um, including reviews. Um, and um, be sure to click the notification bell if you want to be up to date right away. Um, also, feel free to check out some of our other videos. Um, if you like this one, you might like one of these, uh, the, might like this other one that I'm posting up here. So anyway, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video.